Well, well, I'm the first to say that a nice environment is important, and who wouldn't want to be in a nice environment versus um, an ugly one or an uncomfortable one? But um, when you look at, uh, I guess you could relate it to, it's analogous to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know. The most important thing is your safety. You might have a, a great patient experience in a beautifully designed, harmonious environment, but if you don't come out of it alive, does it really matter? Or if you get one of these infections that can change the course of your life forever, um, what is the point? So I'm glad you asked that question because really the new imperative for designers is that you have to first design for patient safety and then look at the other things. So for years we have been trying to do away with institutional environments and create something, I, I don't like the term hospitality design because there's just, I don't find that a good term at all, but um, I guess from it we can say treating the patient as a guest and that's a good thing. But what most people mean by hospitality design, something that doesn't look institutional. We've been trying to do that for years, and we've come really far as uh, designers of hospitals to do that. But now we have a new imperative, and that is to keep patients safe, and that has to come first and foremost. And that may radically change the way that we design a patient room, because now everything has to be, you have to think about your design in terms of can that be cleaned? Is that crevice going to collect some pathogens that could create a problem? If that housekeeper doesn't get in there and clean that well, what's going to be sitting there that some, uh, a nurse might come in and put her hand right there and then next touch the patient and, and carry uh, C. diff or MRSA to that patient. So, it's a whole new way of looking at patient settings, patient room design. But there's another really functional aspect to it. If you are familiar with what the CDC requires for different types of protection, like contact precaution, they have different levels of precaution depending on what the pathogens are. And some of them require the uh, caregivers to actually don uh, something like a spacesuit, including a, um, some headgear that has a battery pack and it's a breathing apparatus. Well, where are you going to store all of that? Um, you, you don't want to have an ugly cart that looks like it came from Sears Roebuck, um, you know, with that stuff outside the door, but yet the caregivers can't run down the uh, corridor to a even a decentralized supply room to get it, where are you going to have all of that? I don't see anybody addressing that. So now we've got all these um, uh, multi-drug resistant infections that every hospital is dealing with and, and it's a major problem and it's very hard for them to deal with it. And then where you've got these contact precautions and you have to uh, put on a spacesuit to go in. Um, where is all that gear going to be stored? There needs to be something in the corridor that somehow, whether it's through the wall or whatever, um, you can't keep these supplies in the room in a nurse server because they get contaminated. As I was doing, I did hundreds of interviews for this book with architects, with um, uh, chief nurse executives, with unit managers, and, and they brought up some very interesting points. Uh, one nurse said, you know, sometimes we have inhalers with medication that are not a single dose. And she said, where do I put something like that? I can't put it back in the uh, Pixis cabinet, and I can't just put it in a drawer, you know, it has to be locked. And then if it's in there, how is it contaminating the inside of that drawer? She said there's so many things that architects and designers are not addressing that have an impact on infection control. And as I interviewed a lot of these nurses and, and talked to them about their day-to-day -day needs, in all the projects I'm involved in, I mean, I don't see anybody in all the projects I collected for the book, I don't see people dealing with those issues. I'm still seeing a very kind of generic patient room and nursing unit layout that isn't really addressing these specific needs of infection control, which I don't think are going away anytime soon, and they may never go away.